Hey, what's up everybody? It's David McGill. Now in this video, I'm going to break down the differences between being a company driver and an owner operator. Now to go even further, I'm going to break down owner operators in the two separate categories. One, owner operators who lease on to another carrier's authority and two, owner operators who maintain their own authority. So the biggest difference in company drivers and owner operators are who has a truck. So as a company driver, you don't have a truck. As an owner operator, you do in both circumstances. Now, you know, as a company driver, the, the company you're running for, they're the ones who they provide a truck for you. As soon as you start the job, you know, they're going to have, whether it be a sleeper or a day cab, they're going to supply all your equipment that you're going to need. Now, as an owner operator, you're going to be responsible for either purchasing your truck or, you know, leasing your truck um, from some outside source. Sometimes there are situations where owner operators can lease their trucks from the companies who they're running their authority on, who, who's, whose authority they're running under. Control. That's the, the next category, and that, that's, a, that's a pretty big one. Um, as a company driver, you don't really have much control over what you do on a daily basis. Your loads or your routes are predetermined for you by the company you work for, and your job is to just get those, get those loads ran. So I'll say company drivers, you know, have no control. Owner operators who, who are leased on to other carriers, they have, you know, a lot more control over what they do than company drivers. However, they don't have complete control. Now, depending on, you know, what type of agreement you have in place with the company you're running under, you may be required to run, you know, a certain amount of loads per week or per month. Um, also, you probably can't turn down too many loads um, depending on, you know, what type of agreement you guys have in place. So under control, I'll go ahead and say a leased owner operator has some control. Now, as an owner operator who has their own authority, you have all control. You can run when you want to. Uh, you can pick and choose, you know, what type of loads you haul, you know, what type of time frames you deal with, what days you want off, what days you want to work extra, all that good stuff when you have your own authority as an owner operator. Next category, responsibilities. Now, as a company driver, your main and only responsibility is, is driving, you know, delivering the freight uh, safely. So we'll say responsibilities is drive only. You're not responsible for, you know, any repairs to the equipment. Um, now, obviously you still have to complete, you know, pre-checks, I'm sorry, pre-trip inspections and post-trip inspections, but anything you identify during those inspections, um, any def defects to the truck, it's not your responsibility to get those, you know, handled. It's the company who owns the truck that you work for. Now, as an owner operator, at least on owner operator, your responsibilities are also to drive and deliver the loads However, um, you also have to maintain your truck. Now, just like we just mentioned a second ago, you still have to do, you know, pre-trip and post-trip inspections. Now, should your inspection reveal some type of defect with your truck, it's your responsibility, you know, to get that stuff you know, resolve, get it fixed, whether, you know, whether it be something minor or something major, at the end of the day, it's coming out of, it's coming out of your pocket. Also, depending on what your agreement is with your, with your broker, or sorry, with the company that you're leased on to, you may be responsible for finding your own loads, or there may be, you know, a dispatching service um, as part of your lease agreement to where you don't have to find your own loads. The company you, runs on, you run under, they provide the loads for you also. So responsibilities may include dispatching.
I'll put question mark. Also, trailer. Um, you know, again, depending on who what, what carrier you're running under, you may be responsible for having your own trailer, or you may be um, you may be allowed to you know use one of their trailers. So I'll put trailer question mark. Now, as an owner operator, you have, you definitely, you're responsible for driving. I'm sorry, an owner operator with their own authority. You're definitely responsible for driving, um, maintaining your truck, um, dispatching, whether it be, you know, you finding your own loads or hiring a dispatching service. You're responsible for your equipment, such as your trailer, but then in addition to that, you're also responsible for compliance management, meaning you have to make sure that, you know, you're following all of the DOT regulations, um, your company is in compliance, you know, with drug programs, um, having all of, you know, valid permits, um, fuel tax reporting, um, as well as uh, monitoring, you know, drivers, if you have, uh, you know, any other drivers under your company. Um, so there's a lot of you know compliance issues that owner operators with their own authority must abide by. So I put compliance management. Now the next category is risk. Now as a company driver, there's really not a whole lot of risk to you because you know, it's not your equipment. You're not responsible for finding finding the loads. You know, you just need to drive um, and get the loads delivered. So the risk as a company driver are low. Now, as an owner operator who's, you know, leasing their own authority, um, I'll, I'll go ahead and call, uh, I'll say there is some risk. So we'll call that, you know, medium. because you know you have more you have, you do have more risk than a company driver because you're responsible for your truck however depending on your agreement you may or may not be responsible for getting your own uh loads and trailers so we'll definitely call that medium now the risk as an owner operator is pretty high i'm sorry owner operator with his own authority is pretty high why? Because for the reasons we just mentioned in the responsibilities, there's a lot more things you have to do. Um, with that compliance piece, it's, it's big. So if you were to get shut down, um, like your entire business could be shut down, you know, by the DOT, by the Department of Transportation, you know, if you're not complying. So, you know, there's a, there's a lot of risk. Um, you know, if you were to get into an accident, not only does it affect your driver's license, but it also affects your company's safety score. Um, anytime you go through a DOT inspection, should you not pass it and you get put out of service, that also affects your safety score. So a lot more risk as an owner operator with their own authority. Now, you know, piggybacking off of the risk, let's talk about the reward. Now, as a company driver, you know, it, it's, you, you pretty much, you know, you're getting a steady paycheck. You're going to probably have steady responsibilities. Um, so the reward, I'm going to say that, you know, they're, they're pretty low. Now, I don't mean low in terms of it's low paying um, or anything like that, or you're working for minimum wage. What I mean by low risk is, I'm sorry, by low reward is there's not a whole lot of upside um, as, a, as a company driver. Um, there's probably a structure in place that, you know, after so many years, here is the hierarchy. Like you could probably move up the corporate ladder. However, in terms of, um, really having a big stake in the company, chances are slim, uh, you know, as a, as a company driver. Now the reward as an owner operator who's leasing their authority, I'm going to call that medium. The reason why I'm going to call that medium, I'm going to say medium to high. And that's going to vary, um, you know, depending on, again, the factors such as you know, who's dispatching your loads, um, 
who's responsible for getting your trailers. Um, there could be some, you know, some huge upside as, um, as a lease on driver. Um, however, you know, it's not the epitome of, you know, reward. Like there's going to be some things that you'll be able to do and experience that you wouldn't be able to experience as a company driver. However, it's still not the, you know, it's not the highest level of reward yet. What is the highest level of reward? Owner operator with his own authority. Now, why is that? Now you have the ability, um, you know, to control your income uh, more so as an owner operator with his own authority than the other two options, because um, not only do do you control your destiny and you know you go out and make as much money as you want to without a cap, you can also you know bring on other forms of income with your own authority, such as having other owner operators who don't have their own authority you know, leasing on to your company to where, you know, you can charge them a percentage, you know, and increase your revenues that way. So if we look at the metric of risk versus reward, it makes all the sense in the world. Um, the higher the risk, the higher the reward, the lower the risk, the lower the reward. So I think this will give you guys a pretty good understanding, you know, of, you know, company drivers versus owner operators. Um, now, I think it's very important that you, before you decide on which option you want to take, you have to self-assess and just be real with yourself. Um, there's a lot of responsibility being an owner operator with their own authority. Now, if you know you're not the type of person to do well with a lot of responsibility, then, you know, it would behoove you to, you know, go down this route because you could be setting yourself up for failure potentially. Now, if you're somebody who, you know, you don't want to be responsible for anything, you just want to get up, go to work, drive, collect your paycheck, well, be upfront with yourself in the beginning. Um, and once you do that, then you'll know probably the company driver route, you know, is, is more so is more so your speed. Now, hopefully this video was informative for anybody out there who was struggling to reconcile um, you know, the differences between being a company driver and then the various types of owner operators with, you know, lease on authorities versus owning their own authority. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the description of this video. Um, if you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you know anybody else who could benefit from this information, please feel free to share this video with them. Thanks again for watching.